Um, in case anybody's seeing the thread, we're just getting everything ready for the live. Sorry, it's my fault. I was late. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. God damn it, Matt. You're, you're, now, you're now off the crew. There's That's always not. at least 50 people that That's put up. That's the other thread that we had. That's like live on Facebook. It's recording. The meeting is now yeah. streaming live on Facebook. <laughs> All right. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. So there's uh, God damn it, Matt. You're, so now, you're now off the cruise. These twist off? <laughs> uh, no, wow. they are not twist off. No shit, I was they like, are not. Tearing my hand apart. So, God. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast pregame episode. Of course, I'm Ray. Matt is back live I'm with me. Live <laughs> with first him. time, first time in a long time. We're a little yeah. bit late starting on our pregame because me and Matt were making out a little bit before uh, the camera came on. Hey, and hey. Uh, of course, uh, Tom Nutty is with us, and we're being joined by Sophia V, host of the Vocal Minds Podcast, and she's also streaming this live on her Twitch as well so this is our first time actually streaming on twitch i i checked out that site not too long ago and it looked complicated as fuck and i was just like nope and just <laughs> x'd out of the site and uh tell us a little bit about your podcast and uh what uh what's up with the vocal minds podcast okay so basically i just started podcasting about two months ago and i host um a live stream on twitch every monday with exceptions to Tuesday sometimes, but very rarely. And every week I bring a guest on who it comes from like an unconventional background to kind of bridge the unknown. So like spiritual leaders, religious leaders, journalists, um, celebrity, celebrities, just like various, <laughs> there is no specific. I just am very curious about, um, very curious about what I don't know. So I like to bring people from careers so they can give us a little rundown into, into their careers. That's cool. We kind of do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, of course, we invited you for Isabella because that's a little bit of a different, like, you know, she has Cat Girl Manor, you know, the I'm Chateau, right. Cat Girl Magazine. And she also does a podcast of her own in which she talks, you know, a lot of paranormal type stuff and all that as well. And I mean, just welcome to Happy Hour Podcast. As I say, keep an open mind. Where, where actually, where are you from? Because we're, uh, we're, we're actually, we're in Maryland. Tom's over in Pennsylvania. Can I, sorry, I'm not sure why. I'm literally on Twitch and you can go on my channel. There's like seven, like a few people in here, but like your screen is completely white. So I can see you in the call, but on the stream, it's just white. And I'm not sure why that is. Do you have like <laughs> privacy settings that I can't, I can't uh, share uh, your screen? I don't know. Um, yeah, the light is terrible. Would that be something that would be through Zoom? Or whatever? Is is the is the other thing in the room you? The Michael Corvus is that through your your Twitch? No, I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I thought that might have been the Twitch thing or whatever with that popping that. up. So, yeah, I don't know. As I said, I've never done the Twitch thing before. So, um, that I'm going to have to look into that for the, the Zoom settings once we get a chance. But, of course, um, momentarily, we will be joined by our special guest, Bella Karnstein. She is, of course, the founder of the Chateau. And also Cat Girl Magazine. We're we're gonna be asking her. All, I'm actually very very intrigued. So, you know, it, it it's gonna be a little bit of a train wreck as it always is. So good choice. It looks like the, uh, a Playboy Mansion, but with yeah. kitty cats. Yeah. Well, I mean that's the thing. Like I'm not sure, and I, I want to ask her like if it's more so around like kind of like on the line of furries. Like that's the thing. Like if you've ever. Ran into any, I've never any ran into furries, but it sounds like you have. So. Oh, I yeah. I, what, what's funny is I when I worked at the bowling alley, I, that was actually my first experience with furries. And I was working one night, and I came out, and there was all these people in costumes, and there was girl, you know, cat ears, tail, all that. There was a guy in a Siberian husky costume, like a flat out Siberian husky costume, <laughs> and they're bowling, and I'm like, what the what in the actual fuck? is happening i don't understand like so that was my first experience and one of my manager who was you know he, he's gay he's like hey those are furries i'm like what the fuck like what the fuck is a furry and he said pretty much you know they have sex like animals and all so i don't know if it's the same thing as well, they dress up like animals and they to get that one early i think it'd be perfect 
You don't need to put, are you going to touch the camera through that? Okay. Let's just use a webcam on the laptop. You can put that light on if you want. Can you just operate as a ring? What we're going to do real quick is we're going to get into our Urban Dictionary Term of the Night, which actually our Urban Dictionary Term of the Night is Cat Girl, which mm -hmm. is a cute looking chick with cat ears, a yeah. tail, maybe paw. So I've, heard, I've got a headset, ears. right, with uh, cat ears. So, but I can't what? hear you. I said I've got a headset with cat ears. So oh, yeah. on. It's like my gaming one, and it just happens to have cat ears on. <laughs> It's 100% appropriate. And it's it said, it said cat girls usually rather act cat like and always succeed in very cute and very sexy. So that's our urban dictionary term of the night. And Tom, uh, what, what was up with the comedy show tonight, man? You were supposed to be doing comedy. And uh, yeah. what happened with that? I was supposed to be hosting the show tonight at the club here in Hanover. Shout out Church of Satire. But uh, the weather's not that great. It's everything's supposed to turn to ice in about an hour, hour and a half. And we didn't want people driving home in that mess. So we just just canceled it for tonight. We'll be back on tomorrow night. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, last Tuesday for Fully Fermented, our live version. That's the first time we did that. And of course, we were showing our vintage footage from Eastern State Penitentiary. And we got into a whole bunch of stuff. We were talking about Pep the dog, the quote unquote inmate the only dog inmate that they had at Eastern state penitentiary. And we pretty much got into what it would be like if he was your cellmate and that he could possibly take your cornbread or give you a shakedown upon entering, um, you know, Eastern state penitentiary. Yeah, so make sure everybody yeah. checks that out on all of our social media. Yeah. And, and we, we got this too. Thank you for refusing the laptop. Hey, just before laptop we get too uh, far into this, whoever that Michael Simple, Corbis is, easy. is that part of all this? Yeah, I think that's I think that's our guest. I think she's trying to figure out her, okay. <laughs> uh, her, her um video. So that's, that's fine. Know. I'm just getting that's a lot. What of... I'm trying to do as well. I'm literally on the help desk <laughs> right now with Streamlabs, like trying to help. I'm live. I'm there. But yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Let's. I honestly, so I am not really familiar with the cat girl lifestyle. I've seen like the e girls on TikTok yeah. that do the. I I didn't think I didn't think it was a lifestyle. I thought it was just for TikTok. Yeah. Um, and then furries, there's actual a woman who streams on Twitch and she makes these outfits for this community. Really? And I'm not familiar with furries. I don't even know what it is. Oh, man. I feel like I've been living under a rock. Appar <laughs> apparently when, when furries, apparently they have like group sex and it's called like a fur pile. And that's wow. what it's called. Yeah. And <laughs> completely blown away because you know i just i walk out i was a mechanic when i worked on bowling alley machines so i walk out from the back and i just see this guy in a german shepherd costume just bowling and i'm just kind of like all right well Bones this is husky. how my night's gonna go but german shepherd husky they had german shepherd they had a husky they had a bear oh. they had someone that was dressed up like a goat it also kind of reminds me of uh and tom nutty might know about this because it's came to town a couple of times brony con Brony. That's oh, always God. interesting as well. Have you ever heard of uh, BronyCon? No, I've never heard of it. No, <laughs> is it? Is it? So it's, wait, it's, explain to so the, the 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 fantasy or the fetish is that they like humans that look like furry animals. They dress up like animals. They act exactly like animals. Everything they do is pretty much as an animal type thing and that that's why i'm intrigued with the cat girl stuff because i'm not sure if it's kind of on the same line as a furry or you know with that but it, it's very unique like i mean i don't know a lot a lot about it but i do know that you know when they have sex they have sex like animals so like if you're in a dog <laughs> you're having sex like a dog but you know and i mean that's the thing like i you have know, sex like <laughs> I, I I would dress as a panda because I only want it once a year. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, like, <laughs> and with with that, like, you remember we had the conversation of the man with the pig heart. So really, yes, I do. <laughs> like, is is that dude a furry now? Like, he has a pig heart inside of him. So you know, if he starts picking I, up the pig like characteristics, you know, I thought about it, and he might be the most authentic furry that there is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Man, man, man gets a pig heart, and then the next thing you know, the next time he goes to visit the farm with his kids, he's just eyeing up and down the like prized hog, and they're just yeah, like, yeah. "What are you doing, sir?" And he's just kind of like that one. 
That's the one that I want right there. Bring that hog over here. And, you know, next thing you know, he's rolling around in the mud trying to fuck this hog because he has a fucking pig heart. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really. It really makes state fairs hard for him. <laughs> nice pig. Well, that, that, like, as we said with that episode, the whole babe quote, that'll do pig. <laughs> yep, that'll do pig. Oh, oh man. And of course, we announced over uh, the last week also is that episode 100 is right around the corner. Of course, this is episode 87 that we're recording tonight, Mm -hmm. but episode 100 is right around the corner. The weekend of May 7th will be our 100th episode. And of course, you know, we always go balls to the wall. We always, our one year anniversary, we're live from Jimmy's Famous Seafood. And this time I thought of an whole idea of, with my wrestling background, of doing the first ever happy hour podcast rumble and that's where we bring back 30 of our former guests and we play games and i already kind of have an idea of what we could do and Mm -hmm. with the the pod rumble we bring all the guests in and we're going to do kind of like a hollywood squares type thing with all the guests that we have and we're inviting all the fans to come in they're going to be giving away stuff cds pictures you know based off of whoever the guest is we're also going to be giving away merchandise ourselves and we're going to invite everybody in via zoom to come in and play hollywood squares and we're going to have really fucked up trivia that we're going to be asking and they're going to have a one in three shot chance so if you get two wrong and you get the last one right then you still walk away with a prize you get all three wrong you're out and then what we're also going to do is we're going to do our Cards Against Huma- Humanity segment, but it's going to be Cards Against Humanity Hot Tag Edition, in which what yeah. we're going to do is we're going to randomly draw names of all the 30 celebrities, and they're going to be put together as tag partners, and they have to basically compete amongst each other with the Cards Against Humanity the way that we play it on the show. And then, mm-hmm. since it's a Royal Rumble, there are eliminations. And the elimination part of how you get eliminated is when we play incoherent so (laughs) if you get incoherent the card wrong then you're eliminated at that point the teams are broken up they're eliminated and it just keeps on going until the last celebrity is standing and already we have leon space jam sailwell jimmy star elaine shapiro um ben spanner from the nfl is going to be joining us um janine jericho you know, we have a couple of yeah, invites out. I, I reached out to Al Snow. Al Snow may be coming back for it. Um, a couple of adult film stars. So make sure, you know, you stay tuned to www.thhpod.com for our 100th episode, which is deemed the Happy Hour Pod Rumble, which we may do every milestone episode, which will be 100, 200, 300, so on and so forth until I'm laying until we the, die. Yeah, until we until die. We die. <laughs> We might not make it through the first one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And see, here's the thing. Like, I told one of my buddies, and he's like, dude, you're fucking crazy. Like, how's that supposed to work? I'm like, it's pretty simple. You just put 30 people in a room, and you just go. And that's it. And you know how our show works, Tom. Like, we, I go into it with no backing nothing like that we call the shit on the fly and that's how it is so i think it's going to be fun also justin schlegel from 98 rock he's going to be joining us so it's just going to be completely over the top completely you know outrageous and you know speaking of the wrestling element we yeah we were supposed to do it last week but it ended up getting canceled and rescheduled so pretty much tomorrow we will be live from the marski bar 3301 um let's see. i fixed it by the way we're live oh my god my heart was racing i was like i need to do this <laughs> yeah. so now you guys we can all we can all see you thank god man that only took 15 minutes <laughs> but so, we got there tomorrow we will be live at 3301 foster avenue in canton maryland from the marski bar of course myself aka chase rawlings ruckus who's known from czw wrestle society x huge uh, independent wrestling star chad austin who's known from maryland championship wrestling and of course extreme championship wrestling and playboy bobby star who is known from wwf wcw and also really popular here in maryland and uh, i feel like that once we get rolling some people here in the state of maryland may get their feelings hurt because we're probably going to kind of go off the chain and say how it is and you know kind of <laughs> shoot a little bit but you know that that's how it works so if you're in the area make sure you pop over to marski bar say hello um buy a drink support local businesses and now that we can physically be seen what's up to everybody 
over on Twitch. Now that we've been seen over on Twitch, of course, I'm Ray. This is Matt. We're from the Happy Hour Podcast. And, of course, our brand new co-host, Tom Nutty. So a big fuck Tom Nutty. So everybody out there on Facebook Live or on Twitch, give one big fuck Tom Nutty. And, of course, in case you're confused, he is not Tom Segura. So his name says not Tom Segura. So do not. Think, do not give this man more credit than he deserves because hey, he I, th- I think i made it pretty clear with the name you know <laughs> yeah i might change it to might be tom segura might be you know? tom. <laughs> <laughs> and uh of course uh we're coming here live on facebook live this is our pre-game mm-hmm. episode we just kind of bullshit a little bit before we actually get rolling on our actual formal podcast um we just come on bullshit and all that and uh just uh, Sophia, tell us a little bit more about your podcast. I'm super intrigued. What kind <laughs> of guests have you had on your show yourself? Okay, so I've had Yvonne, who actually was the reason why I got into podcasting. I heard of this woman. She had been kidnapped by the Taliban, and she's oh, from the UK. And not only did she get kidnapped by the Taliban, but she came out and said she didn't have a bad experience. Like they treated her like. Uh, you know, like well, how Muslim, I'm not Muslim, but how w- Muslims say they should respect women. And, yeah. and then she, and they said to her, we'll let you go if you convert to Islam. And so she was in captivity in Afghanistan, British, like one of the top female journalists. And then she said, okay. And, and she left and then she converted to Islam. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> now not that's- only that. But uh, so she I hear once she leaves, like, like, is the converting to Islam just like now gone? It's like, okay, well, when I'm there, I, I, <laughs> now it's like, like I don't think cross, it's a citizenship. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's like that. I don't, or, or. No, no, she actually became like really Muslim. But not only that, she was like the journalist who exposed the US and UK for spying on the United Nations. There's a movie about her with Kira Knightley. They, it's called Official Secrets. So she was like, digging up how they were, you know, trying to place sanctions on Iraq and stuff. And I just found it really intriguing. And so I was like, I need to speak to her. How am I going to speak to her? And I'm not modest, as in, like, you can see. So I thought, you know, she might not agree to speak to me just based, because I'm not a modest woman, and she is. And so, but she did. And she was like, yes, I would love to. And I was like, oh, my God. And I had no podcast at the time. I just wanted to speak to her. I was like, I have a podcast. Do you want to come on as a guest? Nice, nice. And and please, please tell me that you asked her if they let her fire any of those machine guns that we just abandoned. (laughs) Like, all that bullshit that we just left behind. Like, (laughs) But, I mean, still, like, if she goes back, like, you know, are they, like, emailing her? Like, hey, you know, we have all this free shit. Like, you know, come back. Like, look at this humvee we don't know how to drive like they're driving <laughs> it in reverse like down a fucking one-way street and it's just kind of like we don't know how to do this like just firing fucking machine guns out of the windows and shit and does anybody like, know how to drive a stick shift yeah. anybody yeah. <laughs> well i don't know about that but i know that, that they're much more capable than we give them credit for um a lot of them are like uh flew helicopters and shit during that uh oh, yeah the war and stuff so well know. i mean that's the thing like if, if they had the chance like if we would have left one of the helicopters behind well we did well we did so, <laughs> so are they flying around in that helicopter like that's the thing more like, than likely um, you know like i i feel like it should like i feel like we shouldn't have left the helicopter we should have left like one of those plane transport carriers then that way they can drive all those cars up into it and they can do like some sort of like James Bond shit like fast where they the open it thing. up and like <laughs> like drive or the no. car off and they're like dr- flying in fucking air right. in the fucking yeah, car like, and like shit. Yeah, like Fast and the Furious yeah. where they put like the parachutes <laughs> on there and they just... Oh no, no parachutes. No, they just, right. I, I mean... You gotta hit the ground running. You gotta hit the yeah, ground yeah. running. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So, you you had her on. Who else? Uh, who else have you had? I've had J Lo's creative director. He like directs movies for movies, music videos for like J Lo and all the Rihanna's and stuff like that. Mark Sims, who started the internet security system back in the nineties, 
and gave it up because he had an encounter with an alien. So he gave up all this multi-million dollar business. Whoa, 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 whoa. wait, wait, wait. Hey, <laughs> shout out to our friend Billy. He had a he had an experience with a UFO. Come to find out he was really high and it was probably just a flashlight out front. I but, remember it was, yeah. it was a street light. <laughs> but the whole thing <laughs> Dude, I think you see the reflection of yeah. the light because yeah. he had his phone, the light on his <laughs> yeah. phone. It was, <laughs> it was, re- was reflecting off the window. And I remember saying, I was like, dude, I think it was just your light reflecting off the window. How how many brownies did you eat? He's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it was. But no, I so so pretty much he, he was doing all of J-Lo's music videos. And yeah. then just stopped and gave all that up because no 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 the guy who who i said who got an encounter he he created internet security so it's like from silicon valley like you know um and was working in technology making millions of dollars and went on a retreat somewhere in america there's a guy i don't know his name i forgot his name he does these retreats where you get to meet aliens right and Stephen greer i think that's his name Stephen greer or something like that and he oh, does this. I gotta do one of those retreats. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> I think that he just gets people on acid or something, and then they just think that. I'm, I'm also easy. okay with that. Yeah, like, yeah. Wh- I mean, that's whatever it takes. Yeah, we should take Billy to that. Takes- like Billy, no, we're, we're you're not doing any brownies. You're gonna do some acid, and you're gonna meet an alien. I mean, could you imagine that? You well, just walk I'm not gonna. Eating? I'm not yeah. gonna incriminate him, but uh, I'll incriminate myself. We have done that in the past together. So, well, um, I, I mean, that's the thing. I like, think he'd be game. <laughs> do, do you walk up to the alien and go, I loved you in ET? Or, I mean, is it the kind of thing where you walk up to him and go, Hey, thanks for creating Facebook? I mean, I don't like uh, how, <laughs> how, how does that work? Like, I mean, exactly like how do you introduce yourself to an alien being? Like, I, I mean, we have the space force. I, I think, I, I, <laughs> I think, I think they introduce themselves. You don't have much of a say in it. Yeah, they don't they don't introduce themselves. They're just here and right. we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> in the alien world, you are Tom Segura. In our world, you right. are not Tom Segura. I, I'll take it either way. I'm fine yeah. with it. I just <laughs> up an idea. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh have you ever had any paranormal investigators on? Because we've had a couple on our show, and uh, we had uh, Bill Hartley, who was from uh, Ghost of Shepherdstown. He was on our show. He also did a Gettysburg War reenactment, which was really cool, too. He would dress up like, you know, a lot of the soldiers in the Gettysburg War reenactments. And, you know, that, that I can't imagine what it's like to walk around in those wool suits. Like, fuck that shit. Like, I can't even walk around in denim without being hot. <laughs> I, I I live like 20 minutes outside of Gettysburg, right? So, yeah. like I've been there a million times, and those poor bastards in the summertime, like you can tell, like they're just like, why, why am I enjoying this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Like you know, we, we just talked about you know the Taliban like firing off the machine guns. Like imagine that. Like they need to learn how to load and fire musket rifles and musket guns. Like. I mean, Christ, I, I'm lucky that I know how to hold a fork sometimes, much less <laughs> much less hold and load a musket. Like, you got to put the shit in there. You got to put the little fucking thing in there and, like, do, like, the whole, like, little sex motion type thing with the fucking gun. And then fucking next you thing you know. You did awfully just, well. But, <laughs> I think you'd be pretty I, good at muzzle. I, 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 I think you fucking <laughs> got it, right? We're churning butter. Yes, yeah. So now that's what just, they do. They don't load a musket gun. They churn the musket. Just churn the <laughs> they ch- yeah, they churn the musket. Musket churning. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, that's the thing. Like, just like a musket. Like, you get shot with one of those. Imagine getting shot in the knee with a musket. Like your knee is just just exploding. I mean, it's, I, it's like, gone. It's gone I think now. It would be the equivalent of getting shot with a shotgun with yeah. like a buckshot. Like. Well, that's the thing. We talked about this when we had Bill Hartley on. Tom, uh, Tom, have you ever seen the shot tower that we have right here in Baltimore? And that's where they used to make the muskets. For oh, Baltimore. yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's this yep. big tower. And uh, yeah, Sophia, we, we have here, we have what's called the shot tower. And there's this big, it's like this brick cylindrical, you know, building that we have down in Baltimore City. And what they used to do is they would take hot molten metal and they would pour it at the top and it would go down and as it would go down it would roll into a ball 
and then as by the time it got to the bottom, it would, you know, it wouldn't be hot. It would make that form that musket, and that's how they were making the muskets for the yeah. war. And when you see it, and you look at, and that is exactly oh, how shit. I get an erection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Matt. Matt gets an <laughs> Matt gets an erection by watching musket molten musket just go down the side of this tower. <laughs> And of course, uh, we're on Facebook Live momentarily. We're going to be starting an actual podcast episode, which will air on every major podcast platform and YouTube. And uh, we'll have Isabella and Twitch and Twitch tonight. And And Twitch Twitch tonight. tonight. Thanks to Sophia and Isabella Karnstein will be our guest. She will be joining us. Of course, she's from the Chateau, has Catgirl Magazine. A lot of uh, fun questions. And of course, we're going to be playing Ode to Humanity and our very special segment, burn photo which has been a hit and it's been fun every single week and of course sophia is going to take part in that as well so um you know yeah so so is she here now or is it i she she got her name changed on the the zoom yeah yeah so let's see uh let's see if she's uh if she's in here and and then uh we'll see if uh, i mean i don't want to rush her or anything (laughs) she's not ready but you know yeah she could be putting on her cat costume. You know? What if she's just been talking for the last 10 minutes? And like... <laughs> Actually, I think she was. I mean, not to us, but I, when she was setting yeah, up, I yeah, could hear yeah. her talking to somebody. I, that's why I said something, because like, I couldn't hear anybody. I just kept hearing like white noise. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> it's, the, it's the aliens. It's that's the aliens. <laughs> that, that's what it is. It, it's the aliens zoning. It, 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 it's a Taliban <laughs> alien. That's what it is. <laughs> and he's just and I, flying through. <laughs> and I totally believe you because I have done zero acid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zero acid. <laughs> so, oh, man. Oh, hey, yes. there they are. Ooh. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? Good. Can you hear us well enough? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you guys. Oh. We, we, we heard you guys trying to set up for a little bit. Oh, yeah, we were trying to get all set up. We were running around <laughs> yeah. in the background. It was a thing, but we figured it out. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't feel bad. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong when you're live. We've had it happen ourselves, especially when we were doing live broadcasts at a bar. And then the next thing you know, the sound just drops, and you're just kind of like, holy shit, this is really happening. It's so true. It's so true. We literally just had, we had one laptop. The laptop crashed and died, and we were like, oh my god i had to grab another one so it was a whole thing and then it it magically had to restart at that exact moment 30 minutes prior to our uh, engagement it was And uh, happy hour. Yeah, hello. (laughs) And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start our regular program, which is going to air on all major podcast platforms. For everybody that's joined us on Twitch and Facebook Live, we're going to roll right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. Of course, I'm Ray. Matt's back live with me in studio this week. Tom Nutty is coming to us via Zoom. And of course, Sophia V from the Vocal Minds Podcast is joining us as a special guest co-host. And we are being joined by right now by Isabella Kernstein from the Chateau and Isabella who's uh who's this gentleman with you this is Michael my partner hello Michael. Oh, hello, I'm Michael. Hi, how are you doing good how are you we're, we're we're great we're great and we're very we're very very interested in the Chateau and the whole cat girl stuff can you can you just give us a whole background of how this came to be and you know how the Chateau came to be and and all that fun stuff that comes along with it Yeah, absolutely. So originally I was living in England. I was actually based out of Surrey in the UK. And I believe your co-host, you're from the UK too, right? Yeah, I used to live in London. Not sorry, sorry is nice. So you're from Surrey, right? Yeah, Guildford specifically, if you know it. Oh, (laughs) nice. Yeah, beautiful part of country. Yeah, I was out there and they would have a lot of amazing events in London, like fetish events, like fetish garden, skin to like torture garden rather, like really good positive events. And I ended up moving to the US and I wanted to be an event promoter. I wanted to run parties for a living. And originally I went out to Colorado, Denver. Uh, Currently I'm in Asheville, North North Carolina. Carolina. That's awesome, me and my wife took a a trip there. September it was awesome we loved it as soon as we got back we live in Maryland the second we got back in Maryland we were like 
we need to go back to Asheville, North Carolina. It was just mountains everywhere. We loved it. It was one of our favorite trips that we've ever done. Oh, it's, I will say it's absolutely beautiful out here. The scenery and everything's just, just enchanting. But yes, I came out here and I wanted to do something different. And I started with running a lot of fetish events, but I wanted them to be more like costume theme. Like in the UK, we call it like a fancy dress party. Right. It's like where you put on your sexy costume and you can kind of feel like yourself and express yourself through that. So I started doing those up there. We moved over. We did stuff in Las Vegas. Um, we did stuff in Nevada with Burning Man, if you guys know that festival. And then we moved over to New Orleans and did events there as well. And it kind of just started progressing. And you know how like this Playboy with the whole rabbit, the bunny girl thing, right? Yeah. Right. The, the cat ears just seemed like a natural extension of that to some respect where it was like okay if you look at like comic books you obviously know like Catwoman, right very like empowered and sexy cat girl with great feline qualities and if you ever seen a, a real cat hanging around they're very feline they'll slink up next to your legs very sensual creatures so it yeah. seemed like a beautiful extension with the ears to play with that sexuality in a fun way so that's where the cat ears came from and I ended up settling in Colorado, did a property out there. I said, I want to do a magazine that's focused kind of on female empowerment and it's focused on dressing up as well. So it's more about the costumes and play with photography. So we have like right now over 450 models worldwide. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's not, a lot of people ask me, they're like, is it just, you know, a Colorado based thing or? Asheville, North Carolina, or wherever you happen to be. I'm like, no, it's international. So you could be in Australia, you could be in Africa, you could be in the UK, you can be in Paris, France, and still be part of it and be involved in it, which I really like because it's it's inclusive in that way. So it allows that. So yeah, it kind of picked up and uh, it got a lot of attention onto itself. And it's just been growing since then, uh, where now it's you know the largest it's ever been, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, yeah. And with that, and we were, we were talking a little bit on our pre-show, and uh, like with the whole cat girl thing, is that kind of on the same like level as what a furry is, or or is it different? Is it just kind of dressing different. like that? It is different. That's a great question. Actually, I wish more people would ask me that question sometimes. It's different. <laughs> like, you. That's like, thank you for asking that. It's different because it's like imagine like people who are in the furry community, they're like people wearing fursuits and full-on costumes, and they're actually. It's full on, like for them, that's their persona or their first, first, persona. persona, right? That's first. what they call it. Whereas with the kin play stuff, it's more like a bedroom extension. like, And that doesn't apply to everyone. There's definitely people who might be listening to this where for them, it's like a 24 seven lifestyle. And they actually believe they're a cat. Like that is their own thing. For us, the majority is for magazine. It is just wearing like you'd wear a hat or a costume, it's just an extension of your playful self to express yourself in dressing up. That's how I personally see it. Okay. It's like a Playboy bunny. I mean, you wouldn't think that Playboy bunny is a furry, right? Yeah. They're <laughs> modeling bunny is, you know. When you brought up the whole cat thing and it's like, you know, a cat could take it, take out a rabbit like that. Like, oh yeah, they, they can. <laughs> this, if a cat likes you, it really likes you. It's not putting on any airs. So <laughs> they are going to be creatures. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's different communities too. Like the furry community is its whole community unto itself, which is beautiful. And then the kitten play community is like this whole separate entity. And I think sometimes they do mix waters or get crossed over. So yeah, I actually really appreciate you asking that question. It's great. Well, that's the thing. My next question was going to be: Do you ever have any of the furries come and try to get into the whole kitten play thing? I'm not. I personally, at least in my personal life, I've not experienced that too much. Honestly, I think for them, they've already got their community, like their family and their home base. So that's where they can fulfill those needs that they have. I think for what we do, it's more based about modeling and the magazine aspect. So it attracts a lot more uh, models and writers because we do articles as well. Yeah. And uh, now I, I was telling these guys on the pre-show a little bit that um, when I, my first experience with furries, I was working at a bowling alley and they were all in there bowling. And they were dressed up, you know, you had a German Shepherd, you had a Husky. Let's say you're out on the street, you know, you're doing your kitten play stuff. Yeah. And you run into one of the furries dressed as a Husky. 
And then all of a sudden he just starts <laughs> growling and snarling. Me. And then he's just kind of like, I'm going to chase this cat. Like, I mean, at that point, like, are you macing a furry in the street at that have point? You, have, you, have you seen, okay, have you, uh, any of you, have you guys seen the video? It came out of the UK recently. It was a pet play video. It was two girls in the street. I don't know if it was like staged or not. It's a beautiful video. I absolutely love it. And there was two girls and they're both like puppy players, like where people are role playing as dogs, right? So you're talking about yeah. the husky thing. And this guy is walking his, his puppy girl on a leash in the street in London. And there just happens to be, no jokes, another puppy girl on the street. And they both just start barking at each other. They're both, like, <laughs> they're both going for it. And they got it. it. I think it's a TikTok video. Like it went viral, like actually a few days ago. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out because that is exactly what you're talking about the situation if like what would happen if you were to meet another like some regime how you would you react to that and it was it's such a great video and with the chateau if if we were to walk in through the front door of the chateau how how how, how would that look what what would you see upon walking in with all that well it depends where you are because think about this like playboy uh, Hugh Hafner had multiple mansions. He started in Chicago with his company and then he ended up moving to Beverly Hills. He actually had multiple properties, which we call, you know, the Playboy Mansion, right? Where you picture all of the bunny girls and stuff. It's the same way for us. We actually have different properties. So I don't ever like to put it on a specific environment because we do events everywhere. But let's say you walked into an, a chateau event, you'd probably see a lot of girls in catties, a lot of people having a really good time, you know. Obviously, it depends on the environment. So if you're in Vegas, like we did a, a great event out in Vegas, um, there's some really beautiful nightclubs. There's a nightclub called the Chateau in Vegas. It's in, you know the one that looks like the Eiffel Tower? Yeah, yeah. yeah Paris Casino. They actually have a nightclub called the Chateau. So okay. we teamed up with them. They were awesome. And we had an event out there and thousands of people came and a lot of people dressed up in FEMA. Girls are wearing lingerie and the cat is and really having the ability to express themselves. And I think with pandemic and everything that's been going on, a lot of us have been kind of cooped up, which is why we're doing so much podcast stuff. Like we do yeah. podcasts as well, because it's like that helps you be social. Like this is the happy it's hour. Insanity. Yeah, yeah right. that's it. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, this show ended up happening because of the pandemic. Yeah, you can. So, Mike has got a great response to this. Give your Air Force One talk. I love this. So, the analogy, I think at least one of the three of you is prior service, as I understand. So, uh, or I'm going to assume otherwise. But you know how Air Force One, uh, whatever. That's a president's plane, right? What, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is a plane called Air Force One. Yeah. Right. But really, the, the call sign of the designation is whatever plane the president happens to be on, right? Mm -hmm. So if he gets on a Cessna, that's Air Force One or whatever. Well, same thing. Is that true? Any plane? Yeah. 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 So where, wherever she is at becomes the it's chateau. Like, it's because predominantly It's predominantly an online magazine. So it's like the location is really not all that important. It's just like, you know, where it's she is hosting or... a party or the event or, yeah. or what have you. That's a good so, way to put it. That's great. So, yeah. I analogize things, so <laughs> you're welcome. You're from Baltimore, or yeah, uh, just yeah. Baltimore. really, really? Yeah, we're, we're we're from Baltimore. Me and Matt are from Baltimore. Tom, oh. he, well, he's from Baltimore, but he lives in PA now. So you know, he's from Lynn Burning once upon a time. Yeah. Oh, and then, nice, and, nice. Shout and, out to Lynn Burning. Then I did my a AIT up in uh, Aberdeen, and oh, okay. uh, I used to listen to a lot of BAL up your way. Uh, WBAO, ninety-eight uh, rock, yep, ninety-eight rock, Baltimore, WBAO. Actually, the Orioles just uh, got hooked back up with WBAO Radio, so they're going to be the exclusive provider for the Orioles. And uh, have you guys, of course, I know with pro wrestling because I did pro wrestling for you know oh, cool. twenty years. You know, sometimes you go into a place, you know, you do one of your cat girl events and all that. Have you ever oh. had it at a location and you just kind of walked into the location and you just kind of look around and you're like what the fuck like because i i've had that before with wrestling where i walk they'd be like oh you're booked for the show blah blah, blah this that, another and i get to the venue and i look and i'm like what the fuck's happening like we showed up and it was a church one day and we had to put it through we had to move all the fucking pews move all the pews out of the church oh, put wow. the ring up do the whole entire show 
And not to mention, you had a guy who was an anti-Christ character who they booked on the church show. And I'm just like, this isn't going to work out well. (laughs) And then once the show was done, you had to put all the pews back in place. And is there any place that you guys, and you don't have to name it directly, but is there any place you guys walked into where you just kind of looked around Mm -hmm. and you're like, how the fuck are we going to make this work? (laughs) So here, and I get get what you're saying. It's funny with church being, I've actually done events in a nightclub that was an abandoned church that got renovated into a beautiful nightclub. So when you said that, I totally understood what you're saying. But I think in my case, I'm always in control and I'm the one picking the venue. So I don't pick venues that don't match a theme of the magazine. Um, But there's certainly been moments where I've been invited to a space and I look around and I I completely understand what you're saying there as well. It's a thing, so yeah. You basically just described my every moment of life. I'm looking around going, what the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> that that that's what happens when you walk outside you look around and you're like what the fuck or you're driving on the highway and you're like what the fuck is happening right now like yeah. what what's going on like is this real life like well, am i well, really- a joke yeah it's, <laughs> um, you have to accept it as yeah. such <laughs> and this is great i love that you have this happy hour podcast and you can drink on it you know yeah. oh i know yeah, yeah. We, we've been it. prepping for yeah like, we were, at least like, some hours pretty, we were pre-game tall you were having a pre-game we were like okay right <laughs> what, what what are you guys drinking what do you got a gimlet huh? yes yeah, so i have a gimlet i i used to drink a lot of beer but it went uh i no longer have the metabolism of a 30 year old <laughs> so uh now i go with gin which is uh oh. you know Somewhat, uh, you're a bigger man than I. We, we yeah, have I've, a, got, I've got a champagne over here, is the only way to do it. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I'm, I'm, gin is basically alcoholic pine salt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so real. It's Absolutely so true. You know, gin by itself, but you add a little bit of lime juice and simple syrup, and you, you go for the gimlet. And uh, then it's all of a sudden three things your body knows what to deal with. And start, <laughs> you can drink a lot more and not have to jiggle. <laughs> We're gonna have to try that now because yeah, yeah you try it. it's, like, it's a great cocktail. Yeah, don't judge presently, okay? This is this is a fine <laughs> COVID sheath. That I've got going on. You're doing good. You're doing You're doing great. The gin we had, it was called Polo Club Gin, and on Polo the Polo Club bottle, gin? it looked just like the Polo Cologne bottle, and oh. it was awful. It was it tasted the it's way like aftershave yeah. smelled. And and I'm just kind of like, is this really just cologne in this bottle? Like I could have might have been. I think someone was running game on you. I think yeah. they just yeah. yeah. about someone uh, store shop yeah. 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 like, oh, this is great. oh yeah, let's feature this on the podcast. This is gonna be you amazing. You've been through Dundalk a time or two, okay? You need to you need to keep your guard up, okay? If somebody so, hands you a bottle of polo, you know. Let me ask a question. So let me ask you. How did you guys come up with the Happy Hour podcast? What was the idea behind it that birthed what it is now? Well, actually, what's funny is, of course, I said I did uh, pro wrestling for 20 years, independent pro wrestler for about 20 years. Okay. One of the guys who used to be a booker for my wrestling company, he had a TV show called Hamilton's Happy Hour. And he's like, hey, you know, probably about like, I would say 12, 13 years now. He was like, hey, do you guys want to do that again? And he just kind of faded out. Like we started recording stuff and he just kind of flaked out on us. And me and my old co-host, Alex Lunar, at that time, we were like, well, let's just do it ourselves. And so we did a local access TV show called Happy Hour TV. And we featured cool guests. We would go to different events. We would feature local events. We would go to all the local strip clubs, interview all the adult film stars. We had on Sonny from POD. Um, you know, we, we had Fozzie on, we had all kinds of different people on the show and we had three seasons. It got to be number one in Anne Arundel County and Baltimore on local access and on the midnight stuff. And then pretty much what happened is we had a fire and we lost season four and season five in the fire. So it kind of laid dormant. Oh, all yeah. these years. I actually started doing a character in wrestling called Mr. Happy Hour. That was when I won the heavyweight title. And actually his buddy, Mike, was telling me for years, he's like, dude, why don't you bring back the TV show, but do it as a podcast? And the whole thing is, is I never knew how to do a podcast. I still don't know how to do a podcast. I just, <laughs> I'm a wrestler. I know how to- okay, can I, can I, I want to, I want to ask a question, a serious question. This is a pro West. Okay, this is, this actually ties into what we're talking about. Remember yeah. how you were talking about like the furry stuff and the cat girl stuff and what I meant? 
in pro wrestling, it's my saying, right? You have kind of like a character and a persona that you yeah. take on when you're in the ring. That's who you represent. Like it's not, I mean, it's not really you, but it's like your extended character that you're presenting for public. I think in a lot of kitten play stuff, when girls put on the cat ears, it's like when you put on a mask in mm -hmm. wrestling. Do you know what I mean? It's a persona which is an extension of your own personality. Does that make sense? Exactly. And and that's yeah. the thing. It makes a lot of sense. He's a yeah. complete asshole. He's a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Right. Outside of the ring, complete asshole, but inside the ring, a real sweetheart, right? <laughs> you know, or do I have that flip-flop? That was solid. Tell people all the time as you live your gimmick. And that's the whole thing. Like, you know, with the whole kitten play, that's you know, nice. you, like you, that. you, you live, live your, your gimmick. gimmick. Oh, and man. that's the whole thing is, you know, once I retired, <laughs> you know, I'm just kind of like, well, what am I going to do? Yeah. And, you know, his buddy, hey, why don't you bring back the show? But as a podcast, I'm like, okay, sure. You know, whatever. And I just started putting stuff out and, you know, we got guests, after guests, after guests, after guests. And we're just like, screw it. People are having fun on the show, you know, whatever. And, I just get on and shoot the shit. And uh, my whole logic is I don't really like to have a lot of notes because I feel like it's more real. If we just talk, yeah. it's just kind of like, yeah. Hey, if we went out to the bar and it's like, Hey, you know what, what's up with, you know, the Chateau, like, Hey, this is awesome. Tell us about it. You know? And, and that's the thing I, I learned from wrestling, how to call it on the fly, because if you're in the ring, you can sit there and talk out a match 40 times. As soon as you're out there in front of a live crowd, there's no reshoots. There's no nothing. Your ass better know what to do you know, when something goes wrong. So that's kind of how I do this. I'm just kind of, fuck it. We'll just call it on the fly. You know, whatever happens, happens. We'll have, you know, some laughs and, you know, have some fun. And, you know, it, it, now with, with the whole, you know, Chateau and all that, you have various locations. Are you guys working on, like, do you guys want to do, like, I guess, have it set up to where you have multiple chateaus and multiple places? And I know you said you, you might have now, but are you going to try to do it like, kind of in different countries or you know what what's the whole big I think, I think the whole the whole point is one again online like we talk about pandemic you're doing a podcast right because podcasts yeah. easy to reach people you can have a lot of listeners who are engaging what you have to say likewise but the, the still the focus as it always was is the online magazine the girls writing their articles so they can express themselves the, the models doing their photo shoots independent of anything we're doing to express themselves i think it's the number one priority the pandemic permitting you know because it's been a whole thing and we won't get into that whole thing unto itself <laughs> yeah. if if that goes away you know the plan is to be able to have the events and locations again that's the hope with it i think and um, I think it's hit a lot of people very hard. And by having something like a podcast, it allows us all to have a reach we couldn't otherwise have, which is why it's such a good thing. To have the conversation, or yeah. if, if I'm, I'm, I'm going to translate here, so like on, on your average Friday or Saturday evening, you go to 7-Eleven or my preference, Wawa parking lot. Uh, What's a Wawa? What's a Wawa? <laughs> What's oh, fuck. Oh, 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 have oh, access oh, to Wawa. Convenient. Yeah, but the UK girls don't know here. So no, 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 okay, okay. A, 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 a Wawa is like it's kind of like an upscale 7 Eleven where you can go pump your gas, get a great coffee, yeah. and uh, a chicken salad shorty or whatnot. But the thing <laughs> is, like, you can have like 4 a.m. conversations with random folks in the parking lot. Yep, and, yeah. uh, and it's like, hey, consciousness, what do you feel about that? And then like talk to somebody that is either a CEO of some place. Or somebody that is like, you know, asking you for like, you know, 75 cents and then get a, a chili cheese dog or whatever. But it's like, like 7 Eleven, but better. But it, yes. it, anyway, so like a, like a podcast is like the digital version of that where you can just like, you know, um, meet anybody and talk to Bump yeah. up and next to anyone to have these conversations. I love that. And uh, I think like it's the, just like you're in a bar. Like that's a way yeah. happier thing is you're in a bar. But, you can be sitting next to him. You could just have a human conversation about it. It's so fucking cool. Can I, can I swear on this podcast? Am I good? You can do whatever the fuck you want on this now. podcast. <laughs> I'm we haven't yeah. gotten booted off of Facebook Live yet because of some of the shit we've said and done. I know. That's why I'm being careful because I knew it was on Facebook Live. I'm okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are in uh, violation uh, of Facebook terms of service. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we're going to do real quick is we have a new segment that we do on our show. And it's called burn photo. Oh, so you guys oh, really yeah. heard about that. We heard about it. In fact, I saw maybe too late. I saw I found your message 
yeah. is a player on Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, I might add. So you can <laughs> you send yeah, me a message. I only just found it because you know, you can see like the Facebook others inbox thing. What's up? Like, Facebook yeah. has this inbox situation where you can find direct messages, DMs, right? Yeah. And it has a thing called others where it's like somebody, if they don't know you, so let's say a guy is trying to send you a dick pic, classic example. <laughs> That's where they send it. Thank you for not doing that. And, and to protect <laughs> what they do to protect. And it's a great, I love the concept. What they do to protect users is they'll say, this is in your other's inbox. So if you're actively not looking for it, you'll never find it. Yeah. So you actually have to go into the dark zone to find the horrible things. And I, out of curiosity, <laughs> literally, <laughs> Literally, yes, yeah, I went into my other's inbox, which I also have yeah. on, it's called requested on Instagram, and okay. I found your message. I did. I found it. In, I never, I never would have a picture thing. I never would have, but I found it segment. today is the problem. So I never would have <laughs> about that unless I think you have to be friends with someone first. In gotcha. Order to Gotcha. And so it's something so for the future. If you have someone, if you, if you want to send an illicit photo, send a French quiz first. So they they don't don't know, know, so. I'm going to request. Hey, who's this person requesting me? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. oh. that's ex oh. that's exactly how Ray got me. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I got him for the podcast. It was like Ray wants to request. Ray is requesting Tom Nutty, and then Tom Nutty's like, oh well. I mean it. <laughs> yeah. So all right, I, let's do this. Yeah, I opened that message. I was like, "Damn, yes, I'm in." <laughs> so can we, can we just can we just do something real quick? Like your yeah. fantastic co-host here, who's originally from the UK. I I really want to know a little bit more about her. Like, what is your backstory? Like, I want to hear. No, from I wanted to ask you stuff because you were talking about Torture Garden, right? So is that yeah, your question? I'm so glad you mentioned that. <laughs> no, I was okay. So for those uh, who are not familiar with, I want to hear. Yeah, speak. Yeah, speak. those who are not familiar with Torture Guard, I believe it was like one of the first fetish clubs in London, right? And uh, it turned into something huge. Like Marilyn Manson uh, used to go there. Dita Von Teese, like rock stars, celebrities, and it was not only just like a fetish thing, but like pe normal people would go there. Because it was also a club. It was that your first introduction into like, let's say the fetish lifestyle. Yes, that was it. And everything you just said, it just speaks so true to me because you're right. There were so many like celebrities who would go there. It was such a big thing. And what I loved about it was not just the fact it's just like a fetish club. It was the costumes and people were like dressing up and really like focusing on that kind of creative side, which I I totally love it. The makeup is amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. I absolutely, I 100% agree with you. And it's so nice to hear you say that because I really, I feel exactly what you said. I feel the same way. And that was exactly why I got into it. You know, I used to- How go did to you find out you, about Torture Garden? Yeah, do you know Camden? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so Camden Market. Okay, so I'm going back to like the Amy Winehouse days here. Yeah. Today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bless, bless her heart. May she rest in peace. Amazing creature, amazing human being. But um, I used to go down and actually I worked a side gig in Camden Market. I was living in Surrey, specifically at Woking at the time. And I'd catch a train, go down to London, have a weekend job, working at like a gothic religious stool there, like a little thing they had. And it was all about fashion. Like, yeah. For those of you who don't know listening to us, Camden is like a fashion, punk rock kind of like focus point for England. Like all of the people you see, the Mohawks and like the Sex Pistols, everything was born out of that in some respects. And so celebrities like Amy Winehouse would go there often. And there was a great club called The Slime Light, which was a pun on a club in New York, which you may know called The, the Lime Light. Light which no longer exists, but you can still go and have Asian fusion food and it's now a fashion mall. You can still go and fashion see Fashion mall, yeah. A fashion mall. But uh, I loved it. I loved Camden. I loved the fashion. I wanted, I loved this, the slime light. I loved the Cuban. There's a great bar there called the Cuban at the time. This is like- Was that, was that in the stables, yeah? Yeah, in the stables, yes. yes. 
Oh my God. Obviously in the stables. Great. Obviously in the stables. <laughs> that's not, that's not. She knows. She knows what I'm talking about. about the so, she knows. so do I. So do I. So, so so do I. So do I. So then what made you say, Tom? Uh, Somebody doesn't have a fucking about. idea what she's like. Hey, fuck you, dude. I've been to a fashion mall. Yeah, I've been cool. to a fashion mall, you know? No, I was saying so, so. You know the like the founder of Twitch Garden, right? I guess like he was somebody that you wanted to like do events like. So he was hosting. He had the UK basically on lock in the fetish scene. Let's just say, right? And yeah. people in Germany used to come to England just for Twitch. Like people even from America yeah, used to come. To that. And, yeah. So and then you saw him doing that, and you thought, I want to do what he's doing. I want to set up events. I want to have parties, right? And you moved to America and you did, I did you know anyone in America at the time or were you I just- didn't. I I left my friends, my family, I left everyone behind. It was really scary, but I was like, you know, I was there young was and I wanted friend. to do adventure. Yeah. I wanted to do adventure. You know, I wanted to go out and experience something new and kind of change it up a bit. And by doing that, I think it allowed me to really to be able to express myself, but more than myself to, to help other people to have a space to do that in a place like Denver, Colorado. And like we talked about the church earlier, it was a great club called the Church Nightclub. It was owned by Soko, an amazing company. And they gave me the opportunity to work there, which I'll forever be grateful to. And for 10 long years, I worked for them and we did events and it was fucking awesome. So <laughs> we had a great time. We did the Vampire Ball in a church like imagine you've got a halloween costume party if it's a vampire ball imagine doing it in a band church all the ball towns everything that's badass like it, 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 i mean I'm, I'm one of those guys halloween's my favorite um holiday anyways me and my wife went to salem for halloween oh and, yeah how's salem do, i've never oh, been do you like it oh my god it's fucking crazy if you guys ever want to see madness go to salem on halloween it was the craziest shit. I like, witches you know, live there. We'll do, move there. You know, witches live. I really want to go to Sam. Like that is like on my uh, seriously, like on my to do list in my life is to absolutely go to Salem and see that community. On the way up, we'll hit Philadelphia. We'll get a cheesesteak. Is it close? We'll, <laughs> well, yeah. on, the way. on the way. Get a cheesesteak and get robbed. Yeah, right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Gino's or Jim's or whatever. You know, then we'll, 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 we'll go by Dundalk and get some crabs and <laughs> stab. And then go to Philly and get a cheesesteak and shot. If you, yeah. if you go to Philadelphia, stop at Eastern State Penitentiary. That oh, it's a haunted place, right? This is the paranormal place. Okay. Do you, you guys, guys like, know par paranormal, do you like paranormal too, right? stuff? Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, our last episode was our vintage content. Me and Tom, me, Tom, and our good friend Tommy Simbazo, we went live on Tuesday and we were talking about Eastern State Penitentiary. And we actually showed the footage from our old TV show when we visited Eastern State Penitentiary. And Al Capone was a prisoner there. That's they so had a prisoner, by the, they had a dog prisoner by the name of Pep. So imagine that. Like there's a dog in me. Like you, you, you go into Eastern State Penitentiary. And you get a shakedown by a dog. Like, that's the thing. He's just kind of like, yeah, you, you, you're my so son. A long, long ago, like, I was pitching a TV show, like a reality TV show, which was going to be called uh, Ghost House Girls. And it was basically like an all, the first ever, you know, all female paranormal investigation crew. We'd like put on cute outfits and go out and like investigate different areas. And it was like such a dream of mine. And I actually worked really, before I even did the Chateau stuff, that was actually my first dream. Look, you're, you're so sweet. He's refilling my champagne. What a guy, what a guy. But uh, we actually had a pilot and everything and we pitched it to like MTV and all the people actually interested in it at the time. I still have the pilot to this day. But it was like a group of female investigators, but it was still real and genuine and cute. So. Paranormal investigation is something that's very close to my heart. I've actually been a special guest on Ghost Adventures for their oh, Halloween oh. special. I yeah. love them. I love Zach Bagans. Uh, he invited me out to go to his museum there in Las Vegas, which is you have to visit it. It's really cool. His stuff is amazing. I also was very good friends with a magician 
who got married at the Stanley Hotel, which is where The Shining oh, nice. is written. So I got to meet some of the, um, what's the other, the famous one, Ghost Hunters. Is it Ghost yeah. Hunters? Yeah, Ghost Hunters, yep. So I got to meet their crew out there on that. It was funny because my other, my partner of time was hanging out with Zach Bagans, which is Ghost Adventures. And I was hanging out with the Ghost Hunters guys. We took a selfie and I'm like, look who I'm with. And my partner's like, look who I'm with. <laughs> it was, it was super nice. fun. It was a really cute thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, not me. He's okay. like, that one me. But I will be up in that. No, no. I just have ghosts in my place. Yeah, we do. Our apartment yeah. here is super It's gone off three times during this broadcast. Yeah, even while so. we've been broadcasting, the ghost here fucks with the, the electricity lights. and the yeah. lights. Really? And, oh, yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> it's uh, about, like, it's not bad, it's entertaining. It's entertaining. <laughs> it's terrifying for me. But this Stop. ghost, like, is very... Um, like I, lived, I, I grew up in a Active. very big estate in England that was built in the 1400s. So really old as our UK co-host, when I, a lot of the houses- When you say were, estate, are you saying like council estate or not like it's a bad thing, but I'm from council estates. Oh, like no, not, not council. I'm not talking about council estate. Which is oh, estate like, like house estate. Yeah, yeah, I mean, house oh, okay. estate. There you go, you got it, you got it. Yeah. So, uh, I grew up on an estate, right, on a property of land, and it was reputed to be haunted because it was built in the 1400s. It was very old. So they said there was a lot of ghosts there and a lot of haunting. The very stuff. old ghosts. Very old ghosts. You want, right? you want the 1930s era ghosts like I so have. We have They're like, still active. We have like <laughs> Henry VIII, who was a king in England, and he decapitated, like he chopped off the head of a bunch of his wives. It's very famous there. Yeah. She'll know what I'm talking about. So how do you guys monetize on, on how do you, so you moved to America, you started doing events. How do you guys monetize on like being able to fund everything that you're doing? Yeah, we don't is the answer. That is good because here's the <laughs> deal is originally my main source of income came from running events. And right. then when the pandemic hit, there's just nothing there. So right now the answer is realistically, there's nothing out there, which I think a lot of people are experiencing. Like, it's like, what can you do? It's like, you go through it and you try to create your own business and yeah. work hard on that. And you get something like a worldwide thing, like the pandemic, it's just like, you have to roll with the punches. You just mm -hmm. kind of have to do the best you can with what you've got. And yeah, that has been a really hard lesson and a difficult thing to go through, but I'm also very grateful to it because I think what it tells me at the end of the day is, is like human beings there's so much more we can do and we are going to let something like this stop us from doing well and we're going to take it and make something more beautiful in the future that's my feeling i hope that's right. has it been hard for you to maintain relationships with this like like i presume you're introducing people to the lifestyle or they're already in the lifestyle is it hard oh, you're you're hot so i mean not on that sense like you're hot you can get uh, I'm sure you're struggling to get that girl. Thanks. But in that sense, this like, is the part you know, where we all leave. Oh, let the, let yes. the leaves hey, talk. Hey, you're not too, you're beautiful. <laughs> I was no, thinking, well, I mean, yeah, that, you're beautiful. So there you go. Um, uh, like you know, with a guy, he might not understand the lifestyle, right? So, yeah. uh, has it been easy for you? Like, you've never had an issue with that, or no? It's or, hard. I think it is hard. Like, here's the deal. It's like when you're doing anything in a lifestyle, especially if there's like anything revolving around BDSM, like the ultimate thing is you want to respect people's consent and focus on that as a topic. And it's like, like when I look at the whole thing now, how my life has played out, where I am now, the pandemic, everything else, it's like, I think the priority is just about trying to on a basic level to help people to educate them about how to do it safely and do it correctly. And if that is my whole life vocation now, that is what it will be. That is what I've decided. It's about now we need to teach people about how to do this safely, how to do it correctly, so we can all move forward when this pandemic thing ends and have these fun parties and dressing up and experiences again. That, I think, to me, is my personal priority. So you're telling me how to choke a bitch without killing uh <laughs> no, that's a way. But here's okay. Here's the deal. Listen to me. This is important. Well, can, can I give you a call? Yeah, <laughs> that's what she wants to be called. Yeah, yeah. Primer. Hear, hear me out. Have so you ever heard? Have you ever heard about tea and consent? Sorry. Oh, no. 
tea and consent. You know, tea. Hang on. Like tea. 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 Oh, yeah. tea. Oh, yeah. Tea oh. and consent, right? I thought, wait, I thought you were about peeing. I was like, that's a whole that's different thing. That's not peeing. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. 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 Hey, that's a whole other fetish unto itself. I'm talking Join about us on tea. February 3rd for our podcast on <laughs> peeing. No, <it's>, it's, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> tea and consent. Tea, tea and tea. consent, okay? So hear me out. Here's the deal. If you went over to someone's house, this is a this is a class I actually taught a Burning Man, the festival, for many years about consent. If you meet someone and you both decide you fancy a cup of tea, right? It's very British. You both agree, right? You kind of want to drink the tea, okay? You're both like, I fancy a cup of tea right now. You're into it. You're both happy about it. You go in there. Maybe someone's taking a long time to boil the kettle. Maybe it's taking a bit long. And by the time the kettle is boiled, you're like, I don't fancy this tea anymore at this point, right? I don't fancy it. But the other person should just be like, you know what? It's okay, yeah, maybe a couple of time. I don't want this tea to fine. I respect that. I re that's the concept topic there. Now imagine you go further and you've boiled tea and the person, they're still into it. They're still like, I want this tea. And you get to the point, maybe, you know, they've drunk too much tea whether it's tea or champagne or whatever the hell it is. And uh, they're kind of not conscious. They're kind of not conscious anymore because they drank too much tea, right? Or so so would you pour tea right. down their throat and be like, here's the thing, would you pour tea down their throat and be like, you need to, when, you yeah. seven, you said you wanted tea. Now you're unconscious. I'm trying to pour tea down your throat. Do you still want the tea? You're like, no, this person is unconscious. They clearly don't want tea. So I'm going to put the tea away. They might even say, I fancied a cup of tea today, but I don't want it now and I want it tomorrow. And you'd be like, hey, you know what? You're fine. Let's have tea tomorrow. That is like the basic consent rules is like having a fucking cup of tea, okay? You just <laughs> check in. You say, this, it, it, are we all good? Is this good? I want to have this sexy, fun time. Are you cool with this? And if they're cool with it, it's fine. You know, and that's the point of consent. It's checking in with somebody. Right. And it's so, it's so. Frequently, important. often. Frequently, often, and, all the yeah, way through. That's all the way through. Do. And I hope you enjoyed that class on tea and consent. <laughs> I, I got it, thanks. <laughs> well, it's for I'll, 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 I'll never, I will never drink tea the same way. Yeah, <laughs> um, so I know that you haven't gone the way to adult content, right? And the adult industry is very lucrative. Is there a reason why? Because I mean, yes, you didn't go down that direction. You are, you are so, okay. I'm gonna say you are so right about that in the sense I actively did make a choice for that. And here's yeah. my answer to you I actually really believe in sex workers. And I believe, well, previously believed in platforms like OnlyFans and really supported that because I think it's one of the most fundamental, important rights for women is that they should be able to do whatever they want with their bodies. Crazy concept, you know, in this day and age, people still have an issue with that. That's an issue, okay? No we issue. Should. No issue. <laughs> I'm glad you guys don't. I'm not saying you guys. I'm saying there are people out there. Not you. Not you. <laughs> I, don't know, but maybe I not think you. this is a very important conversation because there are people out there who still genuinely, for whatever reasons or hang-ups, they have issues with that. My mm -hmm. whole purpose, I think, in my business, when I made the choice not to have adult content, was not because I didn't support sex workers quite the opposite i wanted to allow my platform to reach a mainstream platform by subverting the system but we have because that's what we say is acceptable and that's what's not so i could be in a position to actually speak on behalf of those people to be like here is why this is illogical here is why these people should be allowed to do what they do and i realized where i was at at the point I actively needed to reach the mainstream media and, and we cannot deny with other platforms, there is still, and it's a bit of a hypocrisy, that we still judge people based on what they're doing. And that unfortunately is a very real thing in our society. And it shouldn't be that way. No two ways about it. Yeah. If you want to, whatever you want to do with your body is your fucking choice, whether you're male, female, Anything in between non-binary, that is your bloody choice in this world. And that is something I will stand by till the day I die. But for me personally, 
just so you understand it, talking women to no, women. No, I'm just saying, because from yeah. a financial point of view and you see people making millions, and I reckon, obviously, just as you like, I reckon- I don't you, make millions. You, so you, you know, would make millions. I got accused, I got accused in a video the other day of making No, but I mean, like, if you did adult content, you would be making, like, mills, but you chose- I don't want to do that. That's not my game. That's what I really admire, because, like, the possible, you know that you can make money. Yeah. You're not doing it. And so, like, within you that there's something that you've said from day one, like, when you was in London, I'm not going to do adult content, and you stuck by it, because- over the years, people change because of money, especially now when you see girls making millions a month, it's yeah. very like, I'm gonna, I, I need to do this. This girl just takes pictures of her titties and sells and makes like 20,000, that like, it's so yeah. easy. And you chose not to do that. So I was wondering like for you, like, what is it that you, that the reason why you still, didn't choose to do still that? Still about, it's still about women's rights. I've had a lot of people tell me it's not that case or I don't care about that. and. It's just fundamentally at my core being. I can't change that about myself. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to start changing my mindset on that. I have to keep to the path I'm on because I believe it has a positive ending. That's what keeps me going every day. So, God, can I just tell you how much I appreciate you right now in this random podcast? Completely like I am. Just, come on. I, hey, look, I, I love don't, it. I don't. together. Yes. Yeah. Hey, look. Don't feel alone. That's a, the exact same reason why I have never done adult content either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you could. It's a point, and there's nothing you wrong need with people. both. And right? I, will, I will say it's important to <laughs> there are people who do adult content, and it's fucking awesome. And I am so proud of those people for what they do. I have friends who are in the adult industry, and you know, they're strippers or sex workers, and I'm like. You're fucking awesome. Keep doing what you do that makes you happy, that pays the bills to have you living the way you need to survive and want to live. You know, there's nothing wrong with that either. So it's important on both sides of this argument because a lot of people have told me like as a feminist, they're like, well, if you support this or you support sex workers, you're not feminist because it's ultimately defeating your gender. I'm like, it's wrongness. No, I'm not saying it's bullshit, which you could say. But what, what I feel is that if you're in this game and you are a woman living in this particular era but we happen to be living which is better than previous eras i might add we've come so far it's like we have to fight for that right and something can i bring up something important i don't want to make this whole thing go viral but like i want to bring up let's something. go viral we, okay, we here just we go. Here we go. Here we go. this let's is gonna go. go viral but can we do something here can we talk about facebook right now and their standards about like, okay, can I ask you? I'm not going to put oh this God, in. This Zuckerberg's room. listening. <laughs> hey, as a, as he hasn't woman, come for us yet. He okay, here we go. As a woman, to my fellow you're, friend you're in the UK, passengers. you're not passengers. It's too late, yeah. you. You are now the vessel. But the for my fellow, my fellow UK gal over here, have you ever posted a picture on Facebook that was not nudity, but maybe you were like, posed sexily or in a bikini and had it removed and they gave you a 30-day ban for that picture has that ever happened to you what what there, happened to me absolutely but i <laughs> said cunt. yeah i said cunt on twitter today just cunt and they suspended yeah. me for saying the word cunt <laughs> and i i called someone a cunt who called themselves a cunt <laughs> and i got suspended <laughs> for calling someone a well, cunt. That's, that's like drinking water in England, hey, that's right. hey, it's a hard sea over here, but over there, it's, it's fine. A soft sea. Hey, no. I caught I commented on a video of people line dancing, and all I wrote was "fucking white people," and I got a seven day ban. I okay, cool. W Y T, and then we trick the algorithm. <laughs> I fucked that algorithm. I went I went all the way into okay, it. Can I I'll give you guys a real story. I had a picture of my girlfriend at the time and she wasn't naked. She wasn't wearing a bikini, nothing like that. She was in a full long gown and she was just posed. She had a hand, one hand like this. Unacceptable. And they said, <laughs> you, they said, we have given you a 30 day ban for posting this picture because it's sexually explicit. And I thought, what the fuck does that mean? What is that? Like at what point if we're talking, and in fact, 
fact, in the 1930s in America and the UK, we would ban women from wearing bikinis at the beach because it was unacceptable. I feel like in our social media standards, we've gone back to that point where women are being chastised and banned for what they're wearing, even if they're covered. That's a dangerous rhetoric. I don't know what porn is. I think it no depends on who you, who you are, which is really dis disgusting because Tory Lanez, for example, during the pandemic used to have like girls doing lesbian shows and full on like having sex with each other on Instagram live. But because he is a big singer from Canada, he never got banned, you know? And he was literally doing lesbian live shows on Instagram live. Like they were having sex with each other. That's so, that's to be, to be fair, that. I would also not ban that. concept of accountability which is a fascinating topic i'm sure so i think what you're trying to say as my female fellow friend here is that this chat was able to do this he didn't face repercussions for his actions because of his point in society which is disgusting yeah because that's a good point do you guys want to play some games yeah, yeah. Okay. No, wait, 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 what games? What games are we going to play? Honey, We're going to play some fucking games now. We, okay. have, we have a segment called Ode to Humanity. We may overrun a little bit. Is that cool? That's fine. You're good. Okay. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to do our photo burn segment real quick. And then we're going to get into our segment called Ode to Humanity, where we play a handful of games. And okay. I also have a video that I want to share with everybody and get everybody's opinion on it video yes a video that just showed me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to start with the burn photo segment you okay. guys feel free to help us roast the photos of ourselves so <laughs> probably we're we're going to start with it's matt okay. it's all so good. this is matt okay. just let it come. so we're going to pull this up right here so that's matt okay. right there okay like right there listen just <laughs> I, I was 15 years old and I was going to prom. Okay. Oh, so that's Over your prom 16. photo. That's that is my prom photo. Well, okay. you look like you're 36 going to prom. <laughs> <laughs> well, well thanks. the that, worst that, roast ever, but uh you were spelt and you dress appropriately you and uh, you me. had the stance with uh your uh, left hand over right, so you can like draw from your right hand and holster. Huh, and, uh, you, uh, I'm, I'm so glad he described that picture. So, well, you could, have, you could have been an assassin, is what we Yeah, I know. It's like, it yeah, looks yeah. like he's about to go to town on that bird feeder behind him. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, mean, I, I can roast you, but like, goddamn, as the as as the fat kid, I, I don't like roasting anybody. He looks like he did okay, security I mean, for the worst concert ever. <laughs> Can I give you my opinion looking at it? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate a gentleman who dresses well. The fact oh, that nice. 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 well, matter of fact, that wasn't even my prom. That was the senior prom that I was invited to. Oh, by now the story the changes. Older girl oh. that I was dating. Oh. So and you I'm were like, 36. Like homeless guy. <laughs> you look like a homeless man now. So and the next one thing that women appreciate, it's a man. Which is this yes, right here. Uh, <laughs> which, right, I've got one like that. I've got one like that. So okay. yeah, I would, yeah, I, I know. Like that. Are it's, you crying tears? It's the first time I mean, you try mascara. Okay. And this, this, is, <laughs> this, and this first question, is this mascara running from real tears or is it drawn down? No, my wife. You used I to told randomly you not to share the photo from last night, okay? <laughs> my my <laughs> wife used to randomly take Snapchat and she would call my name and she would pull up a filter and she would just take that photo of whatever the filter was. And this was the filter. So pretty much we were sitting there and she's like, hey babe. And I turned around. And as soon as I turned around, she's like, Bop. And that's, that's how <laughs> that's crazy that Ronald filter Donald came to be. That's crazy <laughs> that filter <laughs> added yeah. to us. Filter. Yeah, that filter. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm glad that you can express sure. your emotions online through a filter. Is this how it feels hey, on the inside. Hey, I'm, just, I'm just, I'm glad that filter added titties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we like that. That's a positive thing. At least it's not as bad as my high school photo when I had to blind you. Yeah, you're on that guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go, Tom Nutty. This is going to be yours right here which is you on stage. It looks like it might be your first comedy show. I can't and see it. I can't see it. Oh, wait, it's coming up. I see it. Yep. 
and it looks like you're trying to. What year is this, first of all? Yeah, context is important. This is 2020. I was bombing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have no. Well, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> no, no. Was this was this pre-pandemic or post-pandemic? This was right as the pandemic began. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I remember it well. Oh, it, was terrible. it got worse, didn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, it did. Oh <laughs> fuck worse. yeah, it did, buddy. No, Looks like you're trying to pass a kid. Was it a good show? Was it a good show? <laughs> no, that's the whole reason I hit use this picture because that was the time I ate shit harder than I ever had on stage, and there was like 300 people not laughing at anything I said. Uh, <laughs> so, right, you have to commit. You have I, to commit. I, you I, have I, to keep you going. Just learned your own photo. We're in Carbo <laughs> Pants in 2020. You've already accepted the fact that you're a walking purse for exactly buggy dating, right? Because <laughs> that's it's, it's your cargo space. That's fine. That's, that's great. That's right? what I'm saying. Unless, unless you have an LBE or an LBB or whatever the fuck they're calling it now these days, uh, yeah. wearing cargo like, pants. That's a walking purse, and that's fine. You know bro, so, that 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 fucking <laughs> belly, that belly there is a Bud Light collector's edition, and I'm telling <laughs> you right now, it costs a lot of money. You guys have looked like my dad trying to figure out how yeah, to. No, yeah, like, okay, super. who's the guy who was in. Was it. Um, oh, he was in what, what's the, the, the show that has. It's the mummy. The guy who's in the. Brendan Fraser. Okay, and everybody online was like, he's got, a, he's got a dad bod and he's unattractive. And all these girls took his picture and they retweeted it. They put it on their Facebook and they're like, we actually really think he's hot. Yeah, yep. I get it all the time. It's not going to happen to Tom Yeti. I, I, I wouldn't worry so much about the belly. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of women out there, we actually don't care about the belly thing. Like, don't put it on yourselves or take it too hard on yourselves. Because you know? what Thank we actually Christ. care about is, are you funny? Are you humorous? Like, we care about if you can make us laugh. Like, if you can make us laugh, we can go all day long, and it's it's great to be right. in a relationship. I mean, you're funny as fuck. Oh, my God. Clear. That's clear, I'm judging by the events. Like yes. Crushing your pelvic yes. 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 like yes. And I, I want to hear from our UK co-host, what, what qualities do you like in a man? Ooh. I think funny is important, yeah. There you go, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I got this, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think uh so I'm married. Well, technically I'm married, yeah. Oh, but that <laughs> you threw you, th you threw it you no, threw it technically, married, but I am. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not married by law, but I think I, I am. know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Like, ah. you, you live together, you might as well be married. That's the yeah. fucking wrong yeah. technicality I was looking for. <laughs> About beer, so I'm drinking this. <laughs> we're not married either, but we might but as well. But we're disgustingly happy. Disgustingly happy, yeah. Don't worry about it. Keep going. <laughs> do you do you come back to England? I know we're we're doing the thing, but do you ever like what quick the only one thing, like what do your family think about the the Oh my god, this is a whole conversation and I, I love this podcast so much <laughs> actually more than any other ones I've done. Like this there is a lot amazing. to be discussed. <laughs> I know we went into some different I changed my mind. You guys are fucking awesome. I really enjoyed this conversation. You know, it's Looking back, here's what I'll tell you. One, if we were to get married in the UK, were, were if, 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 if. It was <laughs> would you within you, days I'm proposing if anyway? Was Charles, Charles, if, if that was a few our female co-hosts here in the UK, would you come to our wedding? There's another yeah, one. do I have to wear cat ears? You don't have to, you no. can wear a long gown or whatever you, you don't want. wear anything Guys, I'm down. You should have it, <laughs> you should have it in Camden just for a nostalgic. Oh, no, I want to have my after party. Right. Very well, yeah, shop electric ballroom. You'll be welcome. Oh god, he's working on his UK accent. Yeah, I know. We, yeah, I, taught, I, I taught him cockney rhyming slang. <laughs> Day. Yeah. I hope I hope it's I hope it's in Camden because I'm super familiar with that area and I love everything. Not New Jersey, sorry, piece of shit. Happens, you're all invited. Look, I can I can see the ring. I can see the ring. My wife would love to go up there. Yeah. Terrible. Look, 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 Ryan. Look, 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 look. Speaking of uh, speaking of our co-host, here's her photo. Oh yeah, yeah, we got one more. We got one more. Oh, what's this picture? Okay. So this is actually our co-host's photo that she sent us, 
And when I see this, I picture in a movie, have you ever seen the movie Dark Man? When he like <laughs> doesn't have like a face or whatever? Like as soon as I saw this, I saw Dark Man. <laughs> okay. All right. What's the movie? You you want to have a 30 second sidebar about Dark Man? <laughs> no, no, no. That's the answer. Yeah, no, no, no is the answer. All I know is like everybody said, oh, it's the worst movie ever. There oh, it's a great movie. movie. It was. There's one movie reviewer, which may still be active in your area, Bill Wine out of uh, uh <laughs> it was Ray. <laughs> and he was like, This is great. Don't go into it looking for Oscar Award winning this. But it was a good movie. And I watched it when I was like 17 or whatever. It's a good movie. A very, uh, a very early offering from Liam Neeson. What's the plot line? The plot line is he's a guy, he's got a gal, he gets blown up, and uh, he has, he becomes a superhero because he can't feel anything. Uh, but he's got all kinds of shit wrapped around his face. He's missing a face now. Oh, yeah. Well, so, shit. which is That's the point of the show. Okay. Uh, yeah. so it, it, it's very much, uh, very much, um, that's the point of, you know. Oh, Phantom of the Opera. Very much Phantom of the yeah, Opera. Phantom, 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 Phantam 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 you love it, isn't it? Awesome? I, lo I love it probably more than any other movie I've ever seen. Me? Oh my god, me too. It's so it's so sexy for one thing. It's romantic. It touches well, on a lot of difficult subjects to be the, sure. The, di the difficult subjects thing for me is where it got me. Like I knew it was going to be sexy, but then I was like, oh, they are treading on some you know dark water here. Yeah. And I was like, this it's got me. Yeah. Oh, and the, and the music. The music is beautiful too. Oh my God! Can we talk about the score for a minute? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Talk, tell us about the score. Let's hear you speak. Tell it's us about the score. upon it. So good tell Honestly, what I would say is top five of all time, all time movie scores. Right. I think we can all agree here. Right. And what it does is it brings you a feeling of unease, but also ease at the same time. What movie? <laughs> I've I've never seen this. Oh, it makes movie. sense. Don't lampoon him. It makes sense. Okay, can I tell you a story? So this this chat here, he had never seen he had never seen Phantom of the Opera. He never watched the movie. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I forced this guy to watch it. He was like, I don't want to watch this. So I was like, No, you need to fucking watch this movie. And I, he watched it, and at the end of it, he was like, This fucking makes sense. Because and that's when he got his vest. Yeah. It all makes sense now. And now Rivers be the wow. Dapper, you know, but Dapper was existing before. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, so I, 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 I was a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it does go a long mm. way. Like it is. It I does. was singing show tunes in my own uh, living you, room. Yeah, you were. Like, where are we living now? Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. hey, can, can you, can, can like you, the ghost was the backup singer. <laughs> hey, I want to hear a show tune. It's the point of no reach. Oh my god, I'm going to say you can use it. He's actually not bad. I will tell you that. He's actually pretty good. And I'm a fact, decent baritone. He, he used whatever. to say, he used to tell me, he'd be like, I'm not a good singer. I can't sing. And I would hear him cry. You know how you, if you guys ever sung in the shower quietly to yourselves, like you sung out loud to I've never, I've, I've, I've never sung in the shower. I've I would say, I, I would say, I sing, I sing like an amputee. I can't hold a note. My, Bloodhound Gang, you guys should know them. Yes, yes. yes. seen them live. Yes, <laughs> they There's touched me. A song that is a serious song, but it's by a metal band, I think, or something along those lines. And there is a guy, Richard Cheese, and he re sings it. What is that song? Oh, uh, People Equal Shit. People Equal Shit. It's, it's not. a big song. Yeah. It's a Slipknot song covered by Slipknot. Richard Cheese. It's Slipknot. Slipknot. So, Cheese and it's people shit. equal shit. Hey, hey. people <laughs> equal shit. Anyway, That's so yeah, great you can listen to the actual version. Then you get to the part where you split the throat and fuck the wound. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. The point is, he's a good singer. If you wanted, you kind of sing Korea if you wanted it. I don't I feel that he's like, I don't. <laughs> he said, I don't. <laughs> Here's the real question Are you, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for the game? Okay, oh, well, it's a game time. Okay. We're going to start off 
What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start off with incoherent. Have you ever heard of incoherent? No, tell us about it. What is it? So incoherent. We're going to show you a series of cards that are in drunken lingo. Okay. There's hints on the back. You need to figure out what those cards say. So okay. your first card is going to be this one. Okay. What do okay. you think that says? Your cub ants. That's Appalachian. <laughs> Your cub ants. Oh no, you don't know. It's incoherent. It's incoherent. That's what I feel about it. Your cub. Y'all come ass around here right now. God damn it. Get your ass in here and just pull. Is that what it is? I don't know. One of, the, pop. <laughs> one of the hints is tight and comfy. Tight and comfy. Makes that booty pop. You should do the break. Usher. Oh, sure. The best I could do it. <laughs> Bringing out the best in your butt. Y'all cup hands. You cup hands. Can I answer? Can I answer? Okay, please, answer. Yeah. Please. It's yoga pants. Yes. yes. Yoga yes. pants. Tom yoga Nutty pants. is an all star in this. All right. So. <laughs> Bro, I'm I'm so good at being drunk. Yoga pants. The next yeah. one. I'm so fucking impressed by this chat right here. Is this hey. one right here. What do you think that is? Brand new. Picks. Oh God, I got oh, it already. <laughs> something Olympics. Something Olympics. Something no, Olympics. something Olympics. <laughs> yes, Olympics is the second word. It's a local competition, but also a series of competitive events devised as a way to get all your friends blasted. Okay. Bar Olympics. Bar Olympics. Is that Bar right? Olympics. Close. Final answer. I don't know. What I'm Beer. drinking. All right. Tom beer, Olympics. Yeah, beer Olympics. Yeah. It's the Beer Olympics. Also, I thought beer it was Olympics. I thought it was Paralympics the beginning because I got like I have a seven minute bit about Morel. that. So. Right. Yeah, I, that. I live in Beer City, USA, so it's always going to be Beer Olympics. Right. And what do you exactly? Think that one is. Hang on, hang on, sucks. Hang on, sucks. <laughs> hang on, sacks. Hang on, sucks. Hang on, sacks. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, you got it. Hang on, Sax. Yeah, say it again. Oh, I don't know. You tell me. Say, know. say it again, but slower. Hang on, Sax. There you go. <laughs> he said it. Now I'm getting turned on. What? One yeah, of the hints is loose. Let me do it real slow. Let me give a second. Hang on, Sax. There what? you go. What? Hey. What? In the butt. Hang on, Sax. Yeah. Okay. You can you help I, me? I, 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 I would if I could. Darling. I'm just gonna pull some more champagne. You you you're in the interpretation land now. Hang on, sex. All right. What what do you say, Tom? Because you you get almost every single one of these. Bro, I'm yeah, lost on this one. Help me here, chat. Help me. <laughs> Bullshit, <Please. here>. Tom. <laughs> Somebody help me, please. I'm not gonna admit this live. I have no idea what it is. It is anal sex. Ah, that's crazy. Okay, I didn't even getting, see that okay. coming. Somebody anal tell sex. me how you're getting from <laughs> well, anal sex. Well, it's a soft sex. edge. It's a soft edge. Anal, anal sex. Anal sex. Okay, got it. I got it. I can do it. You ready? <laughs> All right. Anal All right, guys. She's ready. She's ready. What it was. <laughs> I now understand it well. I got okay. it. All right. That made the difference. Got it, you know? Have you guys ever played Cards Against Humanity? <laughs> well, yeah, you saw the goddamn case. <laughs> Obviously, right. Ray. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about it, so you have to teach me about it. What is it? Okay, so we play a little bit differently on the show. So, what we're going to do is we're going to read off one of the face cards. Each one of these face cards has two answers. So, each one of you are going to choose a random number between one and seven to randomly answer the card. Okay. You guys are not satisfied with what you choose. You get one rebuttal. And we're going to okay. do two rounds. Okay. Well, yeah. let's, do, let's do this. The first one is, rumor has it that Vladimir Putin's favorite delicacy <laughs> is blank stuffed with blank. Now, Isabella, pick a number between one and seven. Any random number. No, no. Any no, random number. One to seven. Yeah. Any, any number between those, right? Let's go with three. Okay. No, I want to do six. Six. All right. What's yours? Pick your number. Pick it well. Four. Four. All right. So six and four. So, let's see. <laughs> Rumor has it 
that Vladimir Putin's favorite delicacy is a botched circum- circumcision stuffed with slowly easing down onto a cucumber. Yes. Are you guys satisfied with that, or do one of you guys want to change your answer? Can no, I, that reads. Oh, you I, want to read it? No, 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 that reads. Okay, but we gotta go with that. I want to. Okay, cool. A bunch of okay, so. Bunch circumcision. Bunch of circumcision with a cucumber. Yeah. This is an English cucumber. Yes, it's an American or English cucumber. That counts. Oh, there's a wait. Is there a difference? Yes, there is a fucking difference. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can almost grab one from the fridge. I'm not gonna do it. But there is a fucking difference. Just I think oh, there you go. Okay. You should and, grab and, 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 That's the oh difference. What's the and, and okay. So a fucking English cucumber is just a pickle. Okay, no, it's not just a pickle. We're so much more than that. Um, <laughs> oh, that's... Are you ready? Are you ready? Here Look, is. watch. Here comes a jar Look, of pickles. Here is a nice... Oh, oh, fuck. oh look at that thing. I bet you could take that. Right. Hey, bro. I'm going to let you know right now the red coats are coming. <laughs> and Tom's yeah. wearing. It already, it already happened, and you guys won. It already happened. It already happened, and you guys won. So you did a good job on that. But the One. difference, the difference is sure. between the American. This is a great thing for people. This is a real. This so is they're just bigger in Britain. Like, that's that's what take your prop away now. Okay. okay. They're, they're bigger <laughs> in Britain. That's what it is. Yeah, this is the difference. Okay, this is great fun. Like the. English cucumber is not, it, it's not it's thicker. seedless. It's not thicker, it's seedless. Okay, so the American cucumber, it's a little thinner, a little more narrow. <laughs> but but, but to be that. fair, to be fair, yeah. we're spread we're spreading that seed. Yeah, <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rivers, brother. I don't know. American I don't really mean that. But I didn't I didn't even know about this until I moved to America and I was trying to make my like, cucumber sandwiches and I was like what is wrong with this cucumber? Why is it? What's going on? He was like, well, there's different cucumbers. And I learned. And if you go to your grocery store in America, it will literally say English cucumber versus American cucumber. That's not a joke. Any grocery store in the US. You go to give me a grocery store. It, it, me with all about me. segregation. I'm now, here, I'm so. now going to go into a grocery store and demand an English cucumber. Yeah, go to Ingles. Go to Ingles. Demand yeah, go, go to fucking Ingles, dude. Ask, hey, ask Wawa, ask Wawa to put English pickles on your fucking sandwich. Dude. Yeah, you'll no, have no. an English man put his balls <laughs> on a <the> sandwich. <laughs> okay, and for, right, you, you care for this a little bit, then yeah, here we go. Let me put some bright good sauce on your sandwich. Then. <laughs> this okay, fucking okay, guy. Here's oh what I'm saying for our, our fellow English cohort here. Where is she? I haven't seen no, her in for like here's forever. What I want to ask, if you go to an Asda, is yeah. an example, or a Safeway, you'll get your, uh, or Marks Safeway and Spots. Safeway grows like a hundred years ago. Yeah, Marks and Spots, you'll get a yeah, yeah. cucumber. Sorry, what was the question? Marks and Spots. Yeah. Marks and Spencer, you get a proper English cucumber, you go to Asda, yeah. or you can go to Safeway, and you'll get all of the above. Yeah. Yeah. And do, here I have a real question for you. Do you like Marmite? No. You want it? Okay, got it. This is this is important. This is something that most Americans. Well, are some miss. things that you miss, like food wise from England. I miss proper English bacon, okay? Because okay. in England, bacon is very thick. Yeah. And different. In America, it's like a rasher, it's very thin. It's like okay. it is pink. I also miss like, bacon. We're talking about bacon. 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 We are, yeah. 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 She she clearly thinks it's ham. (laughs) (laughs) You're terrible, but here's here's the here's the deal. You got your English bacon, okay? You've got your I have the whole list. Jelly versus jello. So in England, if you're a kid, you get like a party with jelly, okay? And it's like wait, wait, whoa, you get a jelly party? Yeah, with jello. Which is oh. your equivalent, okay? And I so we have all these different words that mean party. different things. So we were just talking about this today. Cotton candy doesn't cotton mean Cotton candy, what? yes. So we have America, cotton candy. They have what? Candy floss. Candy floss, yeah. Oh, I actually like that way better. Can I can I do a quiz question here? Because yeah, anything, sure. What candy floss or cotton candy sounds like in Australia? 
Okay. It's called fairy floss. Fairy floss. Fairy wow. floss. Fairy, like a fairy with the wings. Fairy floss. The more you know. The I, th more I, th I, th I think all straight. Australia wins the cotton candy war oh, here because oh, so Tom, Tom, are you going to be from Australia now too? Because I mean, you're English, you're our English ambassador right now. <laughs> well, honestly, like they don't have fairy floss in Camden. I know this now. So all I'm saying is like, you know, fairy floss is where it's at, you know? Yeah, fairy floss is where it's at. If you're in Queensland. As I have rubbed it from my slumber, I think I've requested fairy floss. <laughs> I think Peter Pan has gotten his share of fairy floss. Oh, uh, you're, dude, you're way, you, you are way too articulate to be Australian. Can we talk about fish? Can we talk about fish? Can we talk about fish and chips? Like fish and chips, yeah. Chips, okay. Fish and chips in America, you have a good sense of what it is. There's my marmite. Like, there's my marmite pot. She'll appreciate that. But um, in America, <laughs> you guys call. Chip, well, so we call it crisps in English. Fries, they're fries. You call it fries. <laughs> fries. Post, right? nine, uh, post 9 11, they're freedom fries. I think, I think crisp, crisp is, is a better is word. I like crisps better. But like, I, I, I want to know what the fish part is because I don't know anybody in America that gets fish and fries. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's fish and chips. So for our UK girl here, like I want to ask you, you know the difference between your crisps. Yeah. And chips. What's the difference? Chips are potatoes. Well, they're both potatoes, but like uh, the ones that you put in the oven, well, technically, or you can make them from like scratch if you want to. But crisps are like what they call they call them chips in America, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They I think them. you have better flavors in America, though. Like in England, oh, we don't. Oh. no, we don't. We have. Fish. Are you aware of the you have the a skip, skip shortage? shortage? Are you a skips monster munch? There is a massive shortage in the UK right now. It's terrible. Have you ever been to Camden and had a nice crisp? I don't yeah. think you have. Canada is being great. Tom was talking about Camden and he means Camden Yards. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've been to Pickles, dude. I've been to Pickles. They have English cucumbers, dude. Yeah. You've been to Pickles Pub. That's in the city and that's in Ocean City, you lying bastard. <laughs> Whatever. You knew what I meant. You got to go to New Jersey and you got to get pulled over by a turnpike cop. In order to be considered an actual American. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I, have a, I have a real question right now. The would you, fight, would yeah. you guys, and I mean, when I say guys, I mean, everybody here who is present in this podcast, would you all be willing to be in one of my podcasts? I have this great, very famous podcast. It's called The Hourglass of Isabella. We talk about different topics. And a lot of it was like a we never talk about British. New Jersey though. No, so. we've never had a New Jersey podcast. That's a fact. Would you guys like to? Oh, be, we could. Yeah. Would you guys like to be a guest? God willing. Yeah. Would you like to be there? Yeah. I would. I would love to come on, talk yeah, about our know. show, and talk about pro wrestling. Whatever you guys want to talk about, we've never paranormal. Pro I wrestling would, show ever. You know, I would. I would love to come on and just talk about Camden. Got a Willie Nelson. Motherfucker. <laughs> We could talk about Camden. We could talk about fish and chips. We can talk about crisps, Tom has his Camden. crisps and That's chips. It. You know what I mean? Right. Like, crisps and chips. We could, we could talk about Wawa's versus uh, 7-Eleven. Sheets. Uh, sheets. Sheets is a solid one down hey, here. Hey, we're, we're adults here. I think we can all agree on sheets. Yeah. <laughs> one law has clearly been a Delaware. <laughs> royal farms also royal farms Rofo. good old rofo because we have the royal farms arena which we like to call the chicken box <laughs> yes sir <laughs> yes i've seen disney and ice at the chicken yeah. box <laughs> I, went, I, I, I went up to delaware and philly about uh two years ago and and, and it changed uh, dramatically uh, you know, yeah. You know what's funny? They 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 they, they DX the uh, the Denny's uh, around here. <laughs> There's one Denny, and it's gone now. Uh, but uh, the Denny's off of Old Baltimore Pike. Which, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna refill my tea. Go go, go refill your tea. Did um, you ask? Did you ask if everyone else wanted tea first, <laughs> or if we want tea later? Would did you, you, get the, did would you, get you like some tea first, or would you like your tea later? I'll make my decision in the morning. Perfect, and I'll listen to it in the morning. <laughs> Tom, you need to get the T's consent first. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying yeah. to do, but I don't want to commit yet because I'm not sure how good the I'm not sure how good well, the fucking T is. <laughs> I'm saying, if you're going to do anything, 
if you're going to undo any kind of British accent, which I do so very poorly, but you <laughs> teased like they owe you money. Here's what you do. Butter tea. <laughs> Okay, here's yeah. what you do. If you it's actually want to do it, it uh, but it also habit. depends on the regional accent. So if you actually want to properly do a British accent, I say you'd say pit, pot, pot, right? That's hitting the T's. But it depends where you are in the UK. So like it might vary. Like if you have a Cockney accent, yeah, he's like it. making in the shit. <laughs> you know, you'd say anything, anything, or anything. Right, that's a very British. What do you think thing. about that then, no? And you think, what you, is he starting with? Well, me? Is he starting with me? <laughs> are, there, are there still, are we like at the point now where in the UK, like I grew up in like this very beautiful system and like, has it has it changed much since I've been back? Can you tell me? So when you say beautiful system, what kind of system is was, I think, I think <laughs> obviously. I, I mean, Way no, when I'm not. walking with her. That's no, but she's from Guildford, which is technically Tom's posh. Gonna I'm talk from about the hood. Camden. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, so it's you, very you, different. Like Camden is somewhere like I spent a lot of my time in, you know, but it wasn't because I think we can all agree that Camden is a fucking great ass city it's, to spend it's time. It's an area, it's not a city. It, that's what that's that's what I meant by that. I meant He's talking area. about Camden Yards, uh, it's our baseball uh, stadium. <laughs> Let's hear, let's hear from you, though, girl. Tell me what you have to say. No, no, no. I was just saying. So wait, in in like, I think it's changed. Yeah. Um, and everything's going mad expensive. They're putting up the electric electricity prices by fifty four percent. Fifty four percent. Like that's crazy. That's so expensive. And we were thinking about going back there, and I wanted to introduce him to my family. And it's just like, I looked at some of like the rental prices, like even in London, it's so expensive now. But it's they're actually crazy. commensurate with what I'm paying here at this time. Yeah, but it's still cheaper than America, but on transfers, it's like very expensive for the UK. It's like, it, cheaper than going grocery like, shopping oh. in America. <laughs> well, goddamn there, Pilgrim. I'll tell you all about my experience working with it, Sakart. So, they keep telling me that I've saved over $124 over the past year by being a member of their, I, I don't know. <laughs> Everything's expensive, man. I, I, it's, I don't know. It's, <laughs> and I think it's not just a specific country problem. It's like a world problem. I think since pandemic, like prices have just been rising. Everybody is isolated and kind of feeling alone and you can't go out or properly go to the pub. And I'll, again, I'll ask my British girl here, where's the lockdown at? Can you guys go out? Are you in lockdown? Where are you at? There's no lockdown. Yeah. Because Bro Boris Johnson was having parties, right? And uh, so he got caught, like someone filmed him. And yeah, he had a party. I heard yeah, so he had to lift down, lift everything because there, yeah. it's, it's, his job depends on it basically. Because everyone was going mad because they lost people like family members and they weren't allowed to go to funerals, they couldn't go to hospitals, nothing. And so, people like the people are going mad at the Tories because they are partying and spending tax money on cocaine and um, out expensive wine. Hey. And that's Boris Johnson's thing. He only yeah. likes like expensive wine and they found receipts where he's spending like hundreds of thousands on just wine. So Boris Johnson is like the red conservative. He's the prime minister of the UK. He, 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 Boris Johnson. Let me, let me put it correctly. He previously became the mayor of London first. Yeah. Standing. And now he's prime minister, is that correct? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, that's so, so what you're saying is he made Britain great again? Oh, <laughs> but he is oh, a lot of people, oh, like people you. are really suffering. <laughs> Fuck Tom, <laughs> buddy. Okay, here's, here's oh, no, he say. didn't. Tom <laughs> okay, no, here's, here's what I want to say, because politics are always hot topic conversation, and I think perhaps in this day and age, like we experience all the cancel culture stuff, it's very difficult to yeah. speak about our opinions freely on a podcast or anything else. I think that should always be the priority as human beings that we should be able to express ourselves. And as we're doing, have like polite discourse and discussion about this stuff. And that's why, like in your case, when I was talking to you as like a fellow person from the UK, like I really appreciate your input. And what I want to finally know from you is like, where do you think we're at right now 
and where do you hope if you could make any changes what would because people might actually be listening to you like right now like what would you personally do to change and and make it better or anything i actually mean that like i want to hear so, from i don't know if you know who femi is right so i interviewed femi on monday for my podcast and he he's been speak so i have like wait what, what's your podcast as a shout out what is it how can we find vocal you? minds with sophia it's on every platform uh spotify itunes the only platforms that you can't find it on are iHeartRadio and Pandora because they're American and exclusive to yeah, America. But I had Femi on, yeah, who's the head of uh, the anti-Brexit movement, and he debates like Nigel Farage. I don't know if you know who he is. He was the guy who, who's the head of Brexit, right? Reputation in the UK for being a very conservative fellow who made a lot of people very unhappy. Yeah, so Femi, I would want Femi to be the Prime Minister of England because he really cares about the people, like he really does. And I've never met anyone who cares about people the way he does. He, like with the whole Brexit situation, like, so that's what I would want for England. But yeah. I would want Femi to become Prime Minister. And I don't know, I think he's going into that job because he debates Nigel and Boris and all those people, like he's getting, he's getting known. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, can I ask you a further personal question? How do you personally feel about Brexit? Well, I'm European. I'm not actually English. So it affects me because if I want to live in England, I have to have a visa, but I went to school in England. So it's like, I'm crazy because I was European Union, so I could live in England without a visa. But then when the Brexit happened, they were like, oh, well, you need a visa to stay here. It doesn't matter if you've been here 100 years. So I had to apply for a visa. But that, like, apart from that, it doesn't really affect me. I don't, like, I don't and, care. I don't want a British that, passport. I'm, that is I, my whole problem with Camden. <laughs> okay, what, so wait, what, what's your problem with Canada? Well, I'm probably Canada. because Glenn Danzig used to party there a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, of course he did. Me and him are good friends. I'll let him know you said hi. But I, 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 I would see him from the other side of the fucking river. You know? <laughs> well, I was on that other <laughs> side too, dude. We were doing so much cool shit. Like, oh, can you explain to us who's that person? Mother? <laughs> you had to have lived in the 90s. I'm sorry. Oh, we have a problem, guys. Our laptops, <laughs> our laptop's gonna die. Shit, can you play? All right, so actually oh, I'm gonna do, die. Is we we oh, are oh, a little bit, so we're probably gonna need to wrap up shortly. So um what we're gonna do, we're gonna need to wrap up soon. Can you tell us where they can find all of your where they can find the chateau? Oh, man, yeah. all that stuff. and that cucumber <laughs> safe way here in north carolina it's beautiful <laughs> in seriousness if you actually care and want to find the chateau you can find it www.theshateau.org you can also find us on instagram i'm actually under isabella karnstein which is a german name relating to hannah horror those of you are wondering about the name there but uh, beyond that, like, honestly, our main thing is our podcast now, which we'd love to have you guys star on and be involved with. Yeah, the podcast is under The Hourglass of Isabella. You can find it on Spotify, but we're also on Apple and all those other platforms that Anchor distributes to. So shout out to Anchor if they're listening to this. We're a great platform. We're very thankful to They you may know. well indeed. They may well indeed. And we're very thankful for it. So, yeah. What about you guys? For my people on my side who are listening to this, maybe they don't know about you because I put it on my wall. Where do they find you? Sophia, you're our uh, guest co-host. You go ahead and go first. Right, so um, I'm a Twitch streamer. So twitch.tv slash Sophia. I also have a podcast called Vocal Minds with Sophia. And I want to have both all of you on as well. Um, that's it, really. Instagram and Twitter, Vocal Minds Sophia. I've, I've been uns uns unsuspended now from Twitter for saying cunt. Like, I still can't believe it. They suspended me for saying cunt. Like, <laughs> freedom of speech in that, right? You know what? If cunt had an R in it, it would have been accepted. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, with us, the Happy Hour podcast. Of course, unfortunately, there's a lot of happy hour themed shows out there. So, if you well, we our podcast, yeah. it's hard to find. So the easiest way is to go to www.thhpod.com and that's where you can find all of our content, our YouTube, all the major podcast platforms, future guests. And Isabella, if there's any guests that we've had, 
like paranormal guests or anything like that that you want to have one definitely reach out i'll get your contact info yeah i'll have one yeah. We'd love to have you guys on again in the future, but we're going to have to go ahead and wrap up. Yes. Um, you know, thank you. This this was great. You know, we definitely want to do it again. Thank you for tuning into the Happy Hour podcast. We're going to go ahead and wrap up on Facebook Live, and uh, we will see you guys next week.